Big shock to Selçuk Bayraktar. Baykar is about to close. Nobody wants to believe, but this is what happened. One of the last 12 UAVs delivered to Turkish armed forces crashed while it was landing. Thereupon, a law was enacted in the parliament with jet speed last night and all orders cancelled. Even worse, according to the enacted law, Baykar was also banned from selling abroad. According to the statement made by the government, Turkey will now buy unmanned aerial vehicles from Israel. And the first order has already been placed. In the first place, 12 UAVs will be purchased from Israel. How does that sound? Isn't it spooky? Look, this was a fake news, but a similar case really happened 80 years ago in Turkey. Listen carefully. 1936, Nuri Demira, a businessman, defended the idea that Turkey's freedom depends on producing its own aircrafts and decided to set out to produce airplanes. Thus, Turkey's first aircraft factory was established and the last, unfortunately. Nuri Demira was Turkey's one of the craziest businessmen, likewise Elon Musk. Cigarette paper, rail transportation, vehicles, iron and steel factory, parachute. What comes to mind in terms of Turkey's industry, this guy was the turnkey investor. As you understand, his fame was burning at the time. Anyway, the first order comes from Turkish Aeronautical Association. 24 aircrafts, then Spain and Iran, followed by Iraq, with a total of 13 more orders took place. In summary, Nuri Demira had completed the production of 12 aircraft for the Turkish Aeronautical Association. But then, interesting political developments took place. The popularity of Nuri Demira was spreading to the country day by day, and this made politicians nervous inevitably. And the first kick comes from inside the country. Turkish Aeronautical Association cancelled all orders on the pretext of an accident in the test flight. Moreover, a law is enacted in the parliament that prevents export of the aircrafts which is produced by Nuri Demira. For this reason, orders from Spain, Iran and Iraq are also cancelled. Well, you cancelled the orders, but why do you prohibit the men from selling airplanes to abroad? As the orders received from abroad are blocked, remaining planes are scrapped. The result, Turkey's first and still the only one aircraft factory closed. What happened next? Turkish Aeronautical Association took the planes from France. The friends who left the railway construction abandoned in 1926 and escaped. Well, Nuri Demira had completed the job that was left to inertia. Anyway. Let's come to Baykar. Sorry dude, Baykar were not shut down, continues to produce take orders and develops. Baykar is currently the company that sells the most UAVs in the world. Not to well, the company produces hundreds every year and will start to produce thousands in the coming years. Dozens of countries are waiting in line for orders. So to speak, he sees the big picture and tries to raise awareness and inform the society, establishes non-governmental organizations on technology, organizes technology workshops to find and extract the gems in the teens, organizes festivals that even 5-6 years old are crazy to go. He also thinks of the children of the one who wanted to be a pilot when they were young but became a blackmailer columnist at the end of the story and tried to discourage Selçuk by saying the groom develops technology inside the country. Not only in the Mediterranean, strengthens Turkey's hand in foreign policy. So, is the only hero in this story Baykar? Of course not. Turkish aerospace industries did not stand idle either. 
It has worked with all its might to close the technological and economic development gap between Turkey and the developed world. They manufactured UAVs, UCAVs, armaments, helicopters. Then, by exporting these products, the institution enabled Turkey to receive dollars. Moreover, while manufacturing these technological products, Turkish aerospace industries worked with dozens of Turkish industrials and the company led the defense industry in Turkey to develop, signed sectoral cooperation agreements with small and medium-sized entrepreneurs. So, it kept both itself and the industry alive. In this way, it prevented hundreds of engineers from being left inertia.